Hey guys, welcome back to part 11 of the FPS Pawn tutorial series. In this one we're going to be making a sniper rifle with a zoomed in scope effect. And that means we're going to need some new assets and add a new weapon to the game. So I've gone and added a bunch more things, this uh, this AWP mesh, the textures, some animations, that kind of thing, to the download pack. You can get it in a link in the description. And uh, that should be all we need to get started. So let's begin with the animation blueprint. So I'm just going to open up our arms and in BP here, we'll go to the animation graph. And we'll add an option here for our uh, for our AWP. And well, that actually does mean that we're going to have to go back to our uh, our weapon list here and just add ourselves a new entry to this enum. We'll just call it AWP AWP. We'll save that. That way, it will appear in our uh, weapon list here in our enum. We right click. We'll add a pin for our AWP element, and then let's make a little bit of space here. I'm just going to duplicate these nodes. There we go, and plug this into AWP. And then we're going to have to change up our, our state machine here. So I'm just going to rename this to our AWP loco. And then just like we've done before, we're just going to change all of these animations to our, uh, to our AWP animations. So let's find our AWP idle, arms AWP idle, and then jump start. Here we go. I know this is the most boring part of the whole thing, but you know, you got to set your animations. What's this one? Op run. There it is. Jump loop. There we go. And finally, jump end. And I think that's all of them. Jump end. There it is. Okay, so we'll compile that, make sure that it all works. Just double check that we got all of them. There we go. And the next thing is to go back to our event graph. Uh, here we go. In our get weapon name function, we need to add one for our uh, for our AWP, which is appeared here on our switch. So let's well, we'll duplicate this node. Where are we? There we go, duplicate with our Control W, by the way, and then we'll get our AWP, plug this into our branch, and that's it. We're done. So that sets all that up, and now we'll go back to our animation graph. Uh, where is it? Anim graph. So with that plugged in, that's our false for ADS. When ADS is true, though, we're obviously going to be scoped in. So unlike our others, where we'll have a different state machine for our ADS animations, we're just going to piggyback uh, off the uh, AK. So we're just going to use the arms AK ADS and just plug this into true. I know that sounds a little strange, but just wait and see. It's not going to, it's not going to, uh, to look strange or anything like that. So we hit compile, make sure that that's all working, and our animation blueprint should be set. So we'll save that. And the next thing we'll do is, well, we'll make ourselves a new pickup, I think. So we'll duplicate this pickup, the AK pickup, and this will be our AWP, our AWP. And then we'll open it up. And let's see here. So we want to change our, our weapon name here to the AWP. The class is going to be our AWP. That's when, we, when we've eventually made it. And then all of our uh, numbers here, let's say... Uh, uh, I guess we'll say 10, 10 in the, <laughs> in the ammo count and the max ammo. Um, and all of that should be fine. Let's see. Uh, yep. And then we'll go to our viewport. We'll just change our mesh here. We'll change it to the AWP. There we go. And obviously put our material on it. And that will be our AWP, AWP mat. I've included all of these textures, this material. It's very simple. All I did was just, uh, just plugged in the texture to base color and then the red channel into specular and that's all we're going to really need to do and then for the uh scope here for the lens i've just used the chrome ball which comes bundled with the with the engine we can do some interesting things with that though like we can use render targets and that kind of thing to get an actual uh like forward uh reflection for the scope but for the purpose of the video that will just that will work just fine so uh, a little bit about how we're going to make this orb work uh in the player as we've been making it so far we've been um making our aim down sight function happen in the in the player here but we're going to be moving this into uh into each of our weapons because now that we've got a weapon that does something different from from this uh we need a, an individual um an individual function and that means we have to make a couple of changes to our weapon base blueprint here so we'll just open that up we'll make ourselves a new custom event here we go and we'll call it ads or aim down sight and we're going to have to make ourselves an input for it. So we'll get ourselves a new import. It'll be a Boolean and we'll call it toggle. This, uh, as you can see, it's made this Boolean pop up on the, on the event here. This is so that we can, uh, we can use this event and we can get a Boolean result 
uh, straight straight from that. And we'll also make ourselves a new variable here. I'm going to call it ADS underscore FOV for an aim down site field of view, and we'll make that a float. Okay, so we'll compile that and save it. And this is all we need to do, all the changes that we need to make in our weapon base, so we can close that. And then we can start uh, changing around our aim down site function. So let's, we'll start with the AK because we're going to have to change uh, all of our guns up to this point. So, well, that's the pickup. That's the wrong one. Weapon underscore AK. That's the one we want. Okay. So in our event graph, here's where we're going to be adding our aim down site. So uh, let's see, let's grab, we'll grab all of this and we're just going to copy it. I'm just going to paste it straight into our uh, blueprint here, into our weapon for the time being, and then just delete it. Well, there we go. Delete it from our FPS pawn blueprint. And then uh, let's get our gun. So we'll drag in our gun. We'll get the child actor. Get the child actor. And then we want to cast to our weapon base. Cast to our weapon base blueprint. So we'll right click that, make it a pure cast so we don't have to run through the execution. And then out of here, we can get our aim down sight. Um, or rather our ADS event. There it is. There's our ADS. So we'll duplicate that because we need one for uh, one for ADS on and one for ADS off. So we'll plug these in. There we go. And our oh, there it is. And the result of our boolean set here is going to be our toggle, our toggle value. And that's all we have to do. So that really cuts down on the uh, <laughs> you know on the on the amount of amount of calculations going on in our pawn. I'll make my little comment here a bit uh, a bit nicer. Okay, but this means that we have to change we have to change everything for our existing weapons because as it is now. Um, nothing's going to happen when we fire off the ADS in our weapon. So let's go back to our AK here, and here we have our old uh, ADS blueprint here. Let's just get our we'll get our event. So this is our event node, our ADS event node. And it's going to have this toggle boolean, which we're going to use. Let's hold in B and get a branch. So we'll get our toggle value here, and this will be our true false, our so ADS yes or no. So we'll plug these in, play from start, so that they do play each and every time. And then we need to cast back to our player because we can't get the first person camera from our pawn or our mesh 1p from uh, from the, you know, just, just from our blueprint here. So let's delete those references. Let's right click. We'll get the player character. Here we go. Cast to our FPS pawn. Here we go. Just like before, make it a pure cast. And then from here, we can get our first person camera and also our mesh 1p our arms there we go our first person camera will be the one we plug into the field of view obviously there are our field of view nodes there we are and our mesh 1p is our arms so that will be where we set our arm position when we're ads and there we go so that's that's it so that's this is our ads uh function that we've just really quickly adapted into the weapon blueprint itself instead of the instead of the player blueprint so i'm just going to copy all of that and i'm going to paste them into for one our glock is our event graph. There we go. Because the MP5, the Glock, and the AK, they all use the exact same uh, ADS function. We don't really need to, to tweak or change anything. Although this does give us the freedom to be able to, uh, you know, tweak our ADS values on a per weapon basis instead of trying to adjust our weapons to the one single uh, ADS setting. So with that finished, and well, we don't have to do anything for the knife because there's no, no ADS for the knife. So let's just uh, save all, and then we can go and make our AWP. And before we make our AWP, let's just uh, right click, we'll get ourselves a new widget blueprint in user interface. We'll get widget blueprint. This will be our scope underscore HUD. In the download pack, you'll find it in the description. I've gone and added a couple of scope images to use. Uh, one with a, a one pixel cross, which you're probably not gonna be able to see that clearly on the recording. But I'll include it though, because you might wanna use the one pixel uh, cross here in your actual game. But I did also include a two pixel one, which I think is a little bit easier to see. There we go. Although it kind of disappears into that checkerboard pattern in the background. Whatever. We'll see it in the game. So with that done, uh, with, our, well, with our scope HUD created, let's open this up and then we can make up our HUD. So the first thing to do is to get our palette here. We want an image. Uh, there we go. Let's drag that straight in. Make sure we anchor it to the center. And the tint, there it is. That's gonna, we're going to make it totally black. And then like, we'll zoom out a little bit here because we want to make this black uh, image here. We're going to stretch this out. It needs to cover our entire canvas and, and also be uh, quite a bit bigger because we have to account for multiple resolutions as we're, as we're making this up. So let's uh, make that big and then let's drag ourselves in another image. This one, we'll also anchor it to the center. Uh, this image is going to be our scope. 
we get our scope, two pixel. Uh, the resolution is, actually let's double check the resolution just so I get it right. Resolution is 2500 by 1500. So where are we? 2500 by 1500. And as you can see, we have our, our scope here. There we go. Now oh, the zooming is a little bit strange there in the, in the widget. But that's right, we'll just center this. In fact, I might just toggle visibility of our black image there. Make sure we center this just right. Something, something like that. It can always be tweaked at a, at a later date and resized if you really want to. But I think that's a, that's a pretty good, pretty good dimension. So I made that visible again. And all this is going to do is just replace our crosshair for one. And we're also going to be uh, animating this HUD with our, uh, you know, with our, with our ADS to come and go. So down at the bottom left here, let's uh, create an animation. Uh, we'll call it fade and then select it so that we get our timeline up and then add a track for which one we got first. We'll use the, we'll do the black one first. So the black image, new track for image 24 plus track. It will be our color and opacity. We'll bring this down. Now this whole animation is going to be taking place over half a second, 0 0.5 seconds. So I'm going to uh, get a keyframe here. This little button, this little plus here adds a keyframe. We need a keyframe for the 0.5 seconds. We need one for 0.25 seconds and one at the start. So at the start, our alpha is going to be zero. And then at the middle point, it's going to be one. And then at the end point, it's going to be zero again. And that's all we need to do for our black square. The next thing we need to do is to add a track for our scope. So we'll just make a new track here, image 78. You can rename these if you, if you want the, the convenience there. Color and opacity, just like before. And just like before, um, I'm going to add a couple of keyframes here. So right at well, actually we'll add a keyframe at the start here so we can make it invisible. We want it zero at the start. And then at 0 0.25, uh, we'll add another keyframe, but then at the one just next to it, uh, we'll add another keyframe and make it one. And then at the end, it's going to be fully visible. Okay, so that's our little, uh, little animation timeline there finished. So now let's uh, head over to our event graph here. Uh, we can delete the pre-construct and the tick. We're gonna be using the event construct. So whenever this, uh, whenever this HUD element is constructed, is generated on screen, we're going to play our animation. So let's just drag in our fade animation. We'll get fade and then play animation. And it should add our animation to in animation. We'll hook this up to our construct. And that's, uh, that's pretty much it. We only have to play it once, play it forward, play back speed of 1.0, all, all good things. So let's compile that, we'll save it. And then we can head back to our editor here and start making ourselves a new weapon. So I'm just going to duplicate the AK for a start. Always a good place to begin, I think. Call up the weapon underscore AWP, open it up. And first of all, obviously we're going to need to change our model from the AWP, or from the AK rather, to the AWP. There we go. And it's gone and, no, oh, it's going to put the AK material on our scope. <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's a thing. So I'll uh, make that the Chrome ball uh, once more. There we go. Compile that, we'll save it. And the AWP is going to be different from the rest of our weapons in a few fundamental ways. Uh, the first one, well, for one, like how it fires and the, the ADS, the reload is going to stay the same, so we don't have to change anything there. We will have to change some of these things though. For example, the weapon name, it has to be the AWP. Uh, the weapon class is our weapon underscore AWP. In our construction script, uh, let's make these numbers match what we put in the pickup. So I think that was just 10, 10, reload time at two. Name is AWP. Variable mode, uh, I'll turn that off because we don't want to be switching to full auto, but we'll fix that in the firing anyway. And then before we forget, let's open up our pickup for the AWP and we need to change uh, change our weapon class here from the weapon AK to the weapon AWP. There we go. Okay, so the sort of basics are done, like the weapon will work now, but none of the controls are going to, <laughs> are going to make, uh, make much sense. So now we can start building out the functionality for our AWP. Let's start by, well, we'll right click, we'll get our begin play. Where's our begin play node? There he is. And we need to create our scope uh, widget. So we'll get a create widget. The class is gonna be our scope. Oh, where is it? There we go, class is scope. And then, come on. And then we're gonna promote this scope here to a variable. The variable is just gonna be called uh, we'll call it scope HUD. There we go, and that's all we need to do. So now when the AWP, uh, like when the AWP spawns in, it's just gonna create this HUD here, uh, this widget, and save it as a variable so that we can call on it and uh, and use it 
uh, you know, use it, use it later. So let's just put that out the way. We don't need to think about it uh, for the time being. And we'll start, we'll start fleshing this out. So out of our troop, when we do go into ADS, um, we're going to, well, yeah, uh, we'll copy this actually. We'll copy that, paste it here. We'll do this for now. We'll see if this works for us. So we'll go true, true. We'll create this scope HUD widget, save it as our variable. And we also want to add it to our viewport. So let's keep making some room here. Let's add to viewport. There we go. And plug in the target as the result of our uh, variable. And then the result of this add to viewport will go into our timeline here. We'll go play from start. And then, well, out of our false, well, actually we'll back up a bit. We'll finish off our, our true side. So remember the, uh, the float that we put in the, um, in our weapon base blueprint that, uh, AK, not AK, the ADS field of view. So we'll get that. I'm going to set this to 45, say in the, in the defaults here, and then we'll get that. We'll get our, uh, ADS field of view. I'm just going to plug this into, well, actually we'll make it quite a bit lower because I think the regular field of view, we'll make it like 30. We'll go down to 30. And with that set, uh, I'll also duplicate this, plug it into A over here. And we can change this for all of our weapons too. It's just another variable that, that, uh, that we, can, we can play with. And make a bit of spaces. So when we're finished with our timeline, right, sorry, I just had to think for a sec. So when we're finished with our timeline, we want to make our, so this is the true ADS. Once we've, once we played that ADS animation and that timeline is finished, we want to make the gun and the arms invisible. So we need a set, let's get a set visibility node and set our camera and our mesh 1P to invisible once the, once the timeline has done, done playing. And we'll duplicate that because we'll use this in our false over here and make these, uh, make these visible again. I just duplicated those two. Control W. And I'll bring these guys over here, plug these in. And then plug these back into our set visibility. There we go. Make sure that we are visible. And then this will go into our play from start. And we also want to make sure that because we have a bolt action weapon now, we can't just we can't fire in a semi-automatic way. Like we have to rebolt the uh, you know the bullet. So we're gonna need to make ourselves a new variable over here. I want to call it can fire. And it will be a boolean. We'll compile that so that we can use it. We'll make a new branch over here for false, which we'll plug in. I'm going to grab our can fire boolean, hook this up. And if we can fire, then we'll go through with our false uh, over on this side. And that should be all we need to do for our aim down sight. So it's just a little bit more robust than the than the AK and the, the MP5 and the other, the other guns that we've made. Just a, another little check here. And we're going to make the, the weapon and the arms invisible while we're in ADS. Because while we're in ADS, we're going to have that, uh, that sniper, um, the sniper scope. I hope that all makes sense. I hope I'm not, uh, <laughs> not stumbling over myself too much this time. And the next thing to do is to work on the fire. So we're going to make our uh, AWP uh, firing um, blueprint. So we'll basically, we'll basically delete sort of everything here for firing, um, I reckon. Yeah, we'll, we'll just delete it all. We'll start fresh with our AWP. So let's make a new branch. We'll control drag, get our can fire. Uh, plug this in so if we can fire then we can shoot and I'll alt drag to get the set here so if we can fire and we like so we fire when we click this event fire is going to fire off we'll check if we can and if we can we'll set this can fire to false get ourselves a new boolean here we'll also get our ammo count because we do have to check our ammo so if our ammo is greater than zero then we can shoot and if not nothing's going to happen it'll play the uh in fact, we'll, yeah, we'll get our play sound, play sound 2D, and that will be dry fire, our dry fire sound. And then out of our true here, let's set field of view. Oh, what am I doing? Oh, we need our, we need our camera. I'm just going to copy, copy these casting nodes here. These casting nodes with our camera and just get our set field of view. So once we, when we pull the trigger, we want to de-scope, we want to unscope and then play our, uh, play our rebolting animation. And then if we're holding in our button, like holding in our ADS button, we're gonna re, you know, rescope in. And if not, uh, we're not going to. This just means we have to make our checks. Every time we fire, we're just gonna set our field of view back to 90, back to the default. And then set our relative transforms here back to, back to normal. So we're basically recreating our uh, false from our ADS. So I'm gonna copy this node here and we'll need these values as well. So I might just paste it here so I can see everything quite clearly. The location, uh, 
uh, in the y is 0 0.05, in the z minus 16. Uh, I think that's no, that's not right. We want the we want the false. We want the b value. So 5.5 .5 and minus 23.6 or minus 23.67. That'll do. The rotation um, that'll be the same. The scale will be the same. All right. So with our node ready, we'll bring it down here. And then we need to set the visibility. There we go. Of our mesh, of our mesh 1P, our arms, and also our gun. So we'll get our gun, hit gun, and we'll also plug this into the set visibility and set them both back to true. And uh, actually, this reminds me, let's copy this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we don't, we needed to make the, the camera invisible. We need to make the gun uh, visible and invisible. So replace that first person camera node there and this one because it's disconnect we'll get the mesh 1p and our gun there it is okay a little bit messy over here but that's okay we can push through all right so that's done make sure you're not making the camera invisible and uh let's go back down to our fire so out of our set visibility here let's grab our scope hard we'll get that and we'll also set this to hidden. Set visibility, we want it to be invisible. Invisibility hidden. And plug this into our, to our tree here. And then we'll do our ammo check. So let's drag in our ammo check function. Plug that in. Next is our line trace. We'll get our line trace out. There we go. Uh, next is the spawn decal and tracer. We'll grab that. The muzzle location will be in location. Bottom to here, impact point. Then, uh, well, then we play our fire montage. So we'll compile that, make sure everything's set. Oh, something's missing. Ah, uh, yes, the target. The target for our relative transform here is going to be our mesh 1P. All right, so with that set, we'll compile that again. It should be fine. All right, so we're back to our editor. Let's go to animations. We want to find our arms, uh, arms orp fire. We'll just right click that, create an animation montage, and then we'll use that in our weapon underscore orp. So out of our spawn decal tracer here, let's play a montage. In the skeletal mesh component, that will be our mesh 1P. I'll just copy, copy these guys so we don't have to, you know, have those long blue lines. That'll be in the skeletal mesh component. And the montage to play is our AWP fire montage. And we don't need to do anything else there exactly, but we'll grab our um, macro here, our muzzle flash, hook this up to our main output of our montage. And while I'm thinking about it, let's just, <laughs> we'll just readjust our muzzle flash here and maybe our light as well. Move these things over. So where are they sitting? Pretty well, pretty well spot on. All right, compile that back in our event. Now, when we blend out of this animation, let's set our can fire uh, node. We'll set our can fire back to true. Once we blend it out of this fire animation and then uh, we'll make another branch here, come out of this set. And we want to, uh, what do we, what do we need? Uh, we need to get our aim down sight. So we'll come out of our cast to the FPS pawn. We'll get our aim down sight, uh, variable, a Boolean, plug this into our branch. And then whether we are true or not, we'll just sort of do a couple of different things based on, you know, whether we're in ADS or not. So let's grab our, get our mesh one P one more time. There it is. Nope. Don't want the mesh. <laughs> get mesh one. There it is, mesh 1P, and we'll also get our gun. Get gun. There we go. So with these two, uh, we'll come out of here into a, well, we'll use these nodes. We'll get a set visibility. There we go. We'll hook this up. We want to duplicate this as well. Hook them all up to the target. There we go. And when we're not in aim down sight, we want our visibility to be true. When we are in aim down sight, we want our visibility to be false. All right, last thing. Let's get our... Uh, get our first person camera. There we are. And we want to set our field of view. Uh, set field of view. Field of view is going to be either uh, 90, like our default field of view, or it's going to be our uh, aim down sight field of view. Uh, ADS FOV. There we are. We'll call these up. Uh, remember to plug in our camera to the target. We'll compile that, make sure that everything's set and we should be just about ready to start testing. Okay, so we'll make sure that everything's saved. Head back to our uh, scene here, we'll save all. Come back to blueprints and let's grab our AWP pickup. I'm just gonna put it in the scene. 
somewhere somewhere around here and then let's hit play okay so we'll go over we'll pick up our orb and it's not firing let's have a quick look at what's going on so it's checking out boolean what's on the end run side oh it's because it's defaulting to false all right so we want the default value of our can fire to be true save that hit play again there we go much better and we're scoping in just nicely although i'm getting a little bit of animation popping so i might head over to our montage where's our op fire montage we'll set that preview asset to our op i think uh let's see remove all attached assets right click add our preview asset and in the search i'm sort of find our op mesh okay so we were getting a little bit of popping with our orb animation. I don't think it's, um, well, we can probably fix this. If we lower the blend time here to 0 0.1, the blend in and out time, I will save that. So I blend in and out time down to 0 0.1. Uh, I'll close this window here. We'll see if I can get some better frame rate when I'm, when I'm testing out. My old PC is showing its age now. And then hit play. There we go, much better. And our scoping in, scoping in is working perfectly. Okay, so holding in, yeah, hold, holding in isn't uh, isn't working properly. So let's go back to our weapon here, our orb, and let's just have a quick look. I think what's happening is that I'm not setting my scope here to be visible once we go ADS. And yep, I think that is what's going on. So I'm just gonna paste in this node Duplicate that, hook these guys up again. All right, so if I mesh in our gun are both visible, we want our HUD to be invisible. Make sure to plug in our target. But if we are in ADS, if ADS is true, we want it to be visible. All right, so let's connect that back up to the tree. Compile and save, then we'll hit play. And I think, I think we're about good. All right, so yeah, when we, <laughs> okay, so now releasing ADS isn't, isn't making it disappear, all right. Okay, so it's probably a case of yeah, we don't have the we don't have this node in our ADS. So let's copy that, bring it back up here. We'll paste this in, and this will go just after our uh, can fire node here. So we'll move this around a bit, hook this up. Oh, where are we? There we go, and we want it to be hidden. All right, so we'll compile and save. I'm gonna hit play. This should be it. We'll do a little bit of a test here. So. Firing is happening normally, just normal. Then we hold in right click, let go of right click, and we're scoping in and out perfectly. And when I hold in right click and fire, yep, we are <laughs> we are on track. All right, so there's a little bit of bullet spread there. In fact, we could probably uh, probably lower our bullet spread down to something quite a bit lower, like 20. Oh, where are we? 20. And make sure to duplicate these values in our pickup as well. Oh god, where is it? Where's our weapon pickup? There it is, pickup orb. Uh, 20. Could probably call on the, the blueprint and use the defaults here. There's a little bit of optimization that we can still do with this whole system, which uh, I might get to in a future video, but I just wanted to wanted to, wanted to do a scoped rifle to sort of cover cover everything here from pistols to to the knife, automatic weapons, semi-automatic weapons, fire mode toggles, jumping, moving around animations, all of that back. The dynamic crosshair, the hard elements, the sound effects. It's all working quite solidly, but there, there are some more things that we can do and that, and that we can tweak. Uh, a big takeaway from this video, not just the, the getting a scope working, but also adding new weapons to the game and, and, and what's required to do that, like editing the animation blueprint, uh, duplicating the, the pickup, the, the weapon blueprint, and then incorporating it into your, into your player. And uh, on that, like we've gone and really cut down on the, on the number of calculations that are happening in our player itself. It's all just mostly just casting to our child actor, uh, our gun actor here, and then using the events based on our, uh, on our parent blueprint. So I hope you like this video, guys. There's a couple more that I want to cover in this series, so definitely stay tuned. Remember to like the video, leave a comment, all that kind of jazz. If you want to get in touch with me directly, the best way to do that is on Discord. There will be an invite link in the description of this video. And uh, yeah, oh, if there's, if there's anything missing from the download pack, by the way, if there's any files that I'm using that you don't see or that you, that you, that you might not have, just let me know in a comment or something and I'll, uh, I'll send them your way or uh, update the, the download file maybe. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.